Okay, come on out. Please don't scare me. Where are you? Look, I know you're going to jump out. Please don't hide. Unfortunately, when we talk about deviancy in society, we face the problem of determining what is, in fact, normal. Of all the deviant behavior patterns we find in society, perhaps the most common is incest, followed closely by homosexuality. Both of these are culturally defined patterns, and societal attitudes towards them vary from one society to another. In fact, generally, we classify them as relative deviant patterns. Does anybody have the time? Okay, that's enough for today. On Monday, we'll talk about another pattern that might be of interest to all of you, cannibalism. Have a good weekend. Madame, keep walking. Act as if nothing is happening. If you value my life, please, madame, make pretend as though we are together. Huh? Do not look behind you, whatever you do. Don't look behind, please. Please do not look behind you. <laughs> well, now that you have looked behind you, let me ask you a few questions. No. Did you possibly see two men in dark suits getting out of a Citroën with a French poodle? No. No. Okay, then. Uh, how about uh, two men in dark suits uh, getting out of a Volkswagen with a German Shepherd? You saw that, no? Huh? No, I'm sorry. No, all right. Uh, then, um, uh, did you possibly say two gentlemen in dark suits getting out of a Rolls Royce with a bulldog? No, I'm sorry. I can't help Are you absolutely certain? I'm absolutely certain. Good. 
then we are safe. <laughs> Will you go on a picnic with me? Well, oh, you too much. Please. <laughs> No, I really can't. Please, uh, look, I've got a jug of wine. No, I've got I'm... a jug of wine, and i got a, I got a loaf of bananas, <laughs> and i got a piece of bread, and I need a thou, and you're a thou. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, but I, I really Wait. can't. I, I just can't. I have too much to do this afternoon. What could you possibly have to do that's more important than going on a picnic? Uh, I have a lot of homework, and I, and I have to finish a painting, and it's almost the end of the Are you a painter? Um, yeah, a little, you know. Do you know a painting called... Dejeuner sur l'herbe. Oh, Dejeuner sur l'herbe. Dejeuner sur l'herbe. <laughs> yeah, I know it. And who wrote, who, who painted that painting? Manet. Manet. And was Manet a great painter? Oh, well, yeah, he was a great painter. He was a great painter. And what is that painting of? Could it be of a picnic? picnic. <laughs> and what, what, what experience gave Manet the great power to, to, to portray it on, on canvas? Well, I would say it's because he suffered and, and because because he worked on his paintings hard, and, which I have to do less. And, 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 and he went on a picnic. You're right. He went on a picnic. But there were two men in that picnic, and there was a nude woman, and we just don't have the requirements. Oh, wait, that's okay. I'll be nude. Hey, wait. Why do these things always happen to me? Well, look, Jenny. You have to admit that picnic was a gourmet's delight. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to admit bananas and bread is pretty exotic. <laughs> hey, I have a question. How did you know my name? Psyche. <laughs> no way. Good guess. Huh. Well, actually, I asked your professor. Are you in my class? No, I don't go to school. I work in the newspaper. Ace reporter, huh? Well, <laughs> actually, for the time being, I ran errands. But I'm supposed to start writing in the feature section soon. What will you write about? Travel? You don't even know the way back. <laughs> no way, you'll see. We should have turned left back there. No, I'm absolutely positive it was right. We're going the right way, believe me. Absolutely positive it was right. Well, it does look at this point like I made a sliding. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Fine. <laughs> what do you suppose that's for? Who knows? Oh, no, wait, Tom. Let's see where it goes. Oh, come on. Let's go. What is your spirit of adventure? I lost it in the Greyhound bus depot. Typical. <laughs> Aren't you curious? You really want to? Yeah. Okay. Let's walk. Let's drive. Incredible. What do you think it was? I don't know. Probably an old resort. There used to be a lot of them in this valley in the 1890s. Yeah? I was right. Shoulder Springs Spa. Hey, you're not so dumb after all.
Jenny, where are you going? I'm going up here to see what's there. Come on. used by guests who stayed for a longer time. You're going to have to excuse the mess in here. I'm not used to having visitors. <laughs> oh, good heavens. I've completely forgotten my manners. My name is Abercrombie. Agnes Abercrombie. I'm Jenny McAllister. Uh, and this is John... Devers. Well, I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. Make yourselves at home and I'll go see if the tea kettle is hot. Here. These rooms look very comfortable. Do you use the rest of the house? Oh no, I've boarded most of them up. They're all falling down inside. How many other buildings are there? Oh, they're thirteen and a half. <laughs> and a half? <laughs> you young people probably think we're silly, but we think thirteen's an unlucky number. And when the architect's plans call for 13 buildings, they made him add an extra one. What do the insides look like? Oh, they're pretty, pretty messy now. They're all falling down. You mind if we look around? Oh, no. Would you like me to show you around? This place really has quite a history. I'd like that very much. Um, John, do you mind if I, I just stay here for a while? Is that all right, Mrs. Abercrombie? 
I, I feel dizzy for some reason. Are you sure you're okay? Oh, yeah, it's nothing. I'm not sick, are you, child? Oh, it's nothing. I just, I just like to sit here, and I'll catch up with you in a minute, okay? Come on. Okay. You catch up when you're feeling okay, all right? All right. All right.
welcome down. <laughs> you didn't better, John? You're still looking a little pale. No, I'm much better, thank you. You missed a great tour. Oh, um, but there's still the main banquet hall. Okay. Come along. Come on. Now, this is the great kitchen where they supply food for the, all the dining halls and the spa. Three dining halls and the restaurants. It, it's a terrible mess now. Oh, it used to be shining and beautiful. Hi, I'm a side of beef. <laughs> for the tour. It was really fascinating, but uh, I guess we better get going if we want to get back before it gets dark. Huh? Well, thank you both. I enjoyed your company. <laughs> I'm sorry I startled you, child. Oh, that's okay. It was my fault, really. Nonsense. Now, you take care of yourself. I think you may be coming down with a fever. I will. Thanks again for everything. You're welcome. Come again sometime. Maybe we will. Bye-bye. <laughs> of uh, dropping in on people? Well, it does get their attention. Oh, no kidding. Hey, I was wondering when I was going to see you again. Hey, look, I'm sorry. I've been really busy down at the paper. That's another thing. I called that paper where you work, and the person I talked to didn't know who you were. Oh, well, you probably spoke to the front desk. Hmm. Well, they don't know me up there. Oh. <laughs> I'm always in the back in the features section. Well, anyway, I was hey. looking for you today. I've got a surprise for you. Oh, not another um, Groucho the Spy all-expense-paid picnic, is it? Nope. Better than that. A whole day with me ending with dinner on the town. Hmm, sounds promising. When? Saturday. Well, I think I'm free. I know you are. <laughs> well, you're right. <laughs> Where are we going to go? Uh, well, that's the catch. Okay, what are you holding back? Where are you going to take me? Soda Spring Spa. John, no. Oh, John, you know I don't like that place. I know. I know, but listen, this is a great opportunity for me. I told my editor about the place, and he thinks it's a perfect subject for a story in the feature section. Oh, that place gives me the creeps. Oh, come on, please. I mean, this is my first chance to do some actual writing. Uh, 
Next time you can pick the place. Really? I promise. And it won't be so bad. I mean, after I get a few pictures and, and get the facts from the old lady, we can drive our cars back to the city for dinner. Our cars? Yeah. That's the other thing. See, I'll be doing some work north of there. And I thought maybe you could drive your own car up oh. and meet me out in front. John, couldn't I go with you? You can't. It's somebody else's story. I'm just taking photos. I wish you could, but it's impossible. Look, I really want to spend the day with you. It would mean a lot to me. Please? Okay. <laughs> what time? Twelve o'clock. You better be there. I'll be there before you, for sure. You better be. to startle you. God, this is getting to be a habit. Oh, I'm okay. Oh, I didn't expect to see anybody here. I didn't hear you coming. And I had a quail right in my sight. I'm glad you didn't have me in your sight. <laughs> Does Abercrombie mind you hunting here? Who? The old lady who lives here. And no one lives here. No one's lived here since the place closed down, and that was in the early 30s. In fact, no one even likes to come near here. I'm about the only one who ever does. But I don't believe all that nonsense. And generally, the hunting's pretty good. Not that the deer hunting is much, but... Uh... Well, what nonsense? What? You said that, that you didn't believe all that nonsense. 
Oh, I've always said that's just foolish talk. And then the, the... Oh, what kind of talk? Back in 1930 or so, on the 50th anniversary of the opening of the spa, they had a huge ball and a banquet to celebrate. The owner's daughter had been married that afternoon, so they made her the guest of honor. Well, when the, everything was ready for the banquet and everyone was ready to start, the girl was nowhere to be found. So they waited and waited, and finally they started the banquet without her. And then, after everybody had finished eating, a couple of the guests went out into the kitchen to congratulate the cook on the wonderful dinner. And they, f they found that, uh, well... Yes? Uh, well, they found that the cook had killed a girl and cooked her and had fed her to the guests. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's my sentiments, exactly. Oh. But as the story goes, that was the end of the spa. It closed that night and never opened again. Why did the cook kill the girl? They never figured that out. And they, and they never caught her. Her? Mm -hmm. Is this story true? No, of course not. <laughs> I think it's all legend and not fact. But the old people in the valley really believe it. There's people who swear that they've seen the ghost of that bride out here walking around in a white wedding dress. And people have come out here and were never seen again. And a lot of other such nonsense. But I figure that the spa closed because they, well, they just ran out of money. Yeah, I like that reason best. <laughs> oh, that must be John. Oh, he's a friend of mine. I'm supposed to meet him here. Well, thank you for everything. And for not shooting me. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> Bye. Hey, wait. Uh, this is a this is the quickest way out to the front. Oh. It's faster going through here. Now this is the back of the back of the, the main building, and you can cut right through here. Okay. Yeah. Kind of spooky, isn't huh? it? I thought you uh, didn't believe that story. Well, I don't believe it, but uh, still kind of spooky. <laughs> right down there, or to the right. Okay. Thank you very much for everything. Don't mention it. I hope I see you again. Well, I hope I see you too. Bye bye. Bye bye. I'm sorry I was late. Have you been here long? Yes, but, John, listen. Everything's gone. Gone? And when I got here and you weren't here and nothing else was either, I thought I was going out of my mind. Oh, hello! What a delightful surprise! Hello, Mrs. Abercrombie. Are you feeling better today, child? I was worried about you. Yes, fine. Well, it's so nice to see the two of you again. Come on in. I'm just putting on a pot of tea. I'd love some. Oh. Pot 
to believe me. Just a few minutes ago, there was nothing here. She wasn't here, and the room was completely hey, empty. Hey, 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 hold on. You must have come in the wrong way. You mistook an empty guest house for hers. No, I didn't. Well, then how do you explain it? I don't know. I don't know. I just don't like it here, John. Please, let's go. Now you're being silly. Look, relax. Are you feeling okay? Oh, damn it, I'm fine. Okay. Just must have made a mistake. Gage, ready! <laughs> Come on in. We'll be in in a second. You okay now? Oh, I guess. It's just that I... I was so sure. I guess it's possible. Every time you come here, the place is a mess. Don't be silly. It looks fine. Now, tell me, what brings you two back here so soon? Such an unexpected pleasure. Well, when I got back, I was telling my editor about... Your story. editor? Do you work for a magazine? Newspaper. Oh. Here, dear, be careful. It's very hot. Thank you. See, I don't exactly work for them yet. I mean, I don't write, but... There you I, go. Thank you. But I think I've got my chance now. I think I can do it, and I think I'll get it. The editor thinks that the resort is going to be a perfect uh, no. subject for a feature story in the Sunday no. section. Oh, and if I work one out, he's willing to make every effort to try oh. and get it in. Oh. So if you're interested, I brought my uh, my tape recorder, and, and I'd like to take a few pictures and ask a few questions. Yeah. Now, you were saying... Oh, well, uh, my editor thinks that the resort here would be a perfect subject for a feature story in the Sunday section. So, uh, I brought my camera and my tape recorder, and if I can impose on you for a little longer, I'd, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Oh, of course. Hey, I find the whole thing so exciting. Good, I said. Say, listen, I have something that might interest me, young man. I have a scrapbook with all pictures of this this resort. I'd love to see it. Yeah, there's a picture in here of my father. Here, let's shove this stuff over here. And some of those in some of those carriages I was telling you about. Uh -huh. What's that? Let's see. Let me see his father in law. Oh, there's a there. okay. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't that lovely? Oh, we should see what's on the Yes, but just see. I think I need some air. Are you all right, John? You look awful pale. I just feel dizzy again. I'll go outside for a while. Hey, Jenny. You want me to come with you? Oh, no. Look, get your story. I'm sorry. I'll just be outside. I'll be fine in a minute. Okay.
To the sink. Sure. It's just a scratch. That's no scratch, child. It should be bandaged properly. And when you get back home, you go see a doctor. Here, I can do No! It. Let me. No. How's that fever, child? I think you could be coming down with the flu. Sun's about to set. Be dark in an hour. We'll have to be going soon. Going? <laughs> well, we plan to go back to the city for dinner. Oh, my, I won't stand for that. You stay here and have dinner with me. And spend the night, too. No. Jenny needs the rest. And besides, you don't need any dinner in that foggy city. You'll get pneumonia for sure. That's a very generous offer, but I'm afraid you can't accept. It would be an imposition. Oh, no, it would give me the greatest pleasure. But you weren't planning on three for dinner. And besides, there isn't room for us here. Oh, yes, there is. There are two cottages where my relatives used to stay when they visited me. All I need are pillows and, and some blankets. Of course, I'm afraid it's a little dusty now. Oh, that's very kind, Mrs. Abercrombie, but... I no, hush, child. 
I insist you need the rest. It's all decided. I won't hear anything more. I'm going out now and make the beds. confused with everything that's been happening to me. Everything you think's been happening to you. Okay, so there's no proof, but it doesn't prove that it didn't happen, and, and it doesn't change one thing. What's that? That I saw Mrs. Abercrombie coming out of that padlocked room, which he told us he didn't have a key for. Jenny, you gotta believe me. Mrs. Abercrombie was with me the whole time, talking about the resort. She didn't leave until we heard you scream. Well, it doesn't change what I saw. And after what the hunter said... Oh, wait, wait a minute. I thought you just told me that the hunter didn't believe that story himself. Yeah, but... But nothing. Come on. Now look, Jenny. You've just got to relax. You probably... Got a touch of some bug that's going around and it's playing tricks on you. Maybe so. Anyway, I... I'm glad I'm not here alone. You know, abandoned swimming pools always intrigue me. When I found one when I was little, I used to jump in and pretend I was a Christian being thrown to the lions. No, 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 no! What? No, me, it's me. The scene at the end of the monster movie when the, the heroine is finally trapped by the grotesque beast. <laughs> In a swimming pool? Sure. Ah! Step by step, closer <laughs> and closer, the beast came to our heroine, poor Miss Betty Lou. Oh. Until, at last, there was nowhere left to go and she was trapped. The final step. The beast licked his lips in anticipation oh, no. and snorted. Ow! Ow! Then he looked down at her with an emotion he had never felt before. Was it love, anger, pity, greed? Okay. A certain tenderness, shall we say. And with this tenderness, he picked our heroine up ah! to carry her off to his cave. Oh, to who knows what oh, grotesque game. Oh, no! But at that very moment, our hero appears on the scene. Oh! Brave. Yeah. Mm. Intelligent. Trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, oh. kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> and reverend. Our hero, Dr. Bradley, who just happens to be the creator of this hideous thing, cognizant of the evil he has wreaked upon an unsuspecting world, and now that his creature threatens the one thing in the world he loves besides science, <sighs> has come to do battle with the hideous monster. Slowly, he approaches him. Oh. The thing rears up. <laughs> He approaches again. The thing rears up. Come here, you beast. Lay hands off of her. Oh. You mean me? Yes, you, you hideous creature. <laughs> and don't be rude. Take that. And that. Take that. And that. Take that. And the hero gets the upper hand and with a heroic plunge dives his knife into the creature's heart. <laughs> Oh! 
slowly the hero takes the heroine into his arms for the ultimate kiss and final take. No hero at all, but Dracula's nephew <laughs> out for a bite. Oh, you never stop. <laughs> oh, oh, John. <laughs> Come on, John. Okay. What? What? Come on. What? someone would come along and be interested enough in it to to fix it up like it used to be. You know, painted and wallpaper and, mm -hmm. and fix up the lovely old gardens and the, and the walks. Oh, mm -hmm. but that's, nobody feels like that toward a place like this anymore. Those days are gone. This meal is superb. Oh, Shouldn't have had so much trouble. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Wasn't any trouble, you know. Cooking's really my hobby. Well, this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you like it. What kind of meat is this, Mrs. Abercrombie? Is, is it beef? No. Well, then, lamb or pork? No. <laughs> what is it, then? It's an old secret family recipe. Oh. <laughs> I call it the hunter's stew. Mm. It'd spoil all the fun if I told you how I made it. Mm. Well, it's delicious, so before I go, you promise you'll tell me how to make it? Yeah. I promise to tell you how I make it before you go. Mmm. Okay. Mmm. <laughs> now, anybody for some wine? I love some. Oh. You, child? Oh, thank you very much. Oh, good, good. Please. There's got to be a perfectly logical explanation for 
for everything that you think has oh. been happening to you. You've probably got a fever and you're overtired. Oh, please, John. There's nothing wrong. Believe me. I'll take care of you. Sorry, nothing ever works out the way I planned it. It's the story of my life. Some dinner in the city. Yeah. What you need now is rest. I'll be right next door. Tonight you get some sleep, and then tomorrow we'll try to figure things out. We'll find your hunter friend. And We'll go see what we can find out in town about our Mrs. Abercrombie, okay? I promise you'll help me check it out. Cross my heart. I won't say that. What's this? Was he here? I guess she left it for me to wear. <laughs> really? <laughs> Come on, let me see it. Well, it's not exactly Playboy. Oh, goodness. Okay. I'll be right next door. must be exactly the same as I told you. Most important, the circle. Don't worry, it will be. But why do we need all this? We didn't have to with the others. The others were not the same. She must be just like that first bride. Okay. Now, remember, we waited for tonight for a reason. So that it can be just the same she must die between midnight and six in the morning. The second before or after. Now I'm having trouble with our helpers. They're too anxious. They could spoil everything. Now remember, most important, the circle. She must enter it without us forcing her. Understood? What about Luther and the others? If they're here by midnight, fine. If not, we won't wait a second for them.
Not you. I'm sorry, Jenny. But you are so perfect.
working. Ah, good. It's almost midnight. I wanted her to be awake. What about Luther and the others? I told you we weren't going to wait for them. Then let's start. Oh, we have to wait till midnight. If that drug may wear off at any time. We don't know how much we got in her. Ah, enough did. I don't want to hurry and spoil this. We've worked too long looking for one as perfect as her. <laughs> Fine, child. I'm so glad you could join us. Although it's a shame after John and I worked so long and hard looking for someone like you. You're not going to be with us very long. Jenny. That shot we gave you was a local anesthetic. You can see and hear fine, but you can't move your body at all. <laughs> frustrating, isn't it, child? But you have no idea how frustrating it's been for John and me, waiting all this time for this night, this special night. Ah, but it is well worth it. Oh, oh, I must thank you for being so generous with that blood for the circle. It's almost time. Fine, child. In a moment, you're going to learn the recipe for my hunter's stew.
does live here. She sure is a messy housekeeper. Are you sure you're in the right room? marijuana. That's not mine. Well, it's your car, ain't it? Yes, it's my car, but those are not mine. I'm afraid you'll have to wait here a while. Sheriff, this little lady don't deserve no private sale. Put her down there with the other one. Yes, long enough. 